What's up YouTube? Will Motivation back with another video. And today we are talking about how to drive my new Aston Martin Vantage. Now, when I say new, I'm talking about new to me. I'm not talking about the latest and greatest version of the Vantage because there's now a 2025 version of the Vantage that just came out. And we will be bringing that to the channel. Uh, our channel is a little bit different because we're able to explain the cars from an owner perspective. So in a lot of my videos, I have done uh, ownership videos of how to drive some of these exotic cars like my Lamborghini Huracan, my Lamborghini Aventador SV, uh, my Ferrari F8, my Ferrari 488, uh, a bunch of cars that I've had on the channel. I talked about how to drive. So we're going to do that with the Aston Martin Vantage. And I'm really looking forward to this one because uh, this car is different, man. Driving it, how to drive it is different. Uh, so you guys are going to see once we jump into the car uh, how different it is. And there's a couple of little things on the outside. So if you ever get a chance to drive an Aston Martin Vantage, either you buy one or maybe you rent one or your friend has one, they let you drive it. This video is going to help you out with everything you need to know on how to operate and drive an Aston Martin Vantage. And good news, based on feedback from my other some of my other how to drive videos, um, I have a GoPro with a hat mount to help us record the in-car video footage. All right, so we're going to do that. It should be a little bit better. All right, let's go ahead and get started, starting with the outside operation, things you need to know before you jump into the car and start driving. Okay, first things first, the key. Here's the key. This is what it looks like. It's pretty standard. There's a lock button right here. Uh, interesting thing is you got to press it towards the top of the button. If you press towards the bottom, it doesn't do anything. You got to push it like towards the top and you'll hear a little honk from the horn, a little slight honk. It's not too loud. Then you've got the unlock button on the left that will unlock the doors and the mirrors will fold out. When you lock it, the mirrors fold in. I think that's a setting you can control in the car. Then if you want to open the trunk, push towards the top and hold it down for about two seconds and then the trunk will open up. Now, a lot of you guys know, in some of my previous videos, we have the measure or gauge of a trunk size by how many bodies you can fit in there. And I'm gonna say you might could get one in here. I say one body, but uh, it's, I mean, for a supercar or for an exotic car, um, it's a good trunk space. You can go on a rally, you can throw a couple of suitcases in here. Um, it has this cool feature that you might use so from a, from the inside of the car, you have this little shelf. So if you wanted to throw some a backpack on here or uh, some purse for your girl or something like that, you could throw it on there and flip this little thing up. Otherwise, if you need the space in the back of the car, you could fold that down and uh, you have all that space to use for the trunk. It comes with a little um, safety kit or flat tire kit right there. And that's pretty much all you need to know about the trunk. Now, closing the trunk, there's a little pull down handle right here. You pull it down and shut the trunk. So that's how you operate the trunk. What else do you need to know? Um, if you see an Aston Martin with two exhaust tips, that means it's a sports exhaust. If you see one, that means it's like the touring or standard exhaust. It's just, the sports exhaust is supposed to be a little bit louder. Uh, we have your gas cap. How do you operate that? You come outside the car, you push it down and it opens up. Boom, you don't have a cap on there, which is nice. So you don't have to worry about losing it. Then when you close it, you just push it down and it'll snap into place. So let's say the car is locked, right? See how the mirrors fold in? Nice feature. If you click that, you can still open this. So if somebody wants to steal your gas, they're welcome to do it. So yeah, Aston, y'all need to fix that. Hopefully on the 2025 that we get, uh, they'll fix that. All right, what else do you need to know? How to open the hood? This is very interesting now. Stay tuned. That's why I said this car is going to be a little different. A lot of people are like, man, why would you do a how to drive video when everybody knows how to drive a car? Well, no, these cars are different, man. Let me show you how to unlock the door and open the door. It's a little different. So you got this little thing like here. The most similar car to this that you might see is my Huracan where, okay, right now the car is locked. If I wanted to open it, like I couldn't really do anything. You can press right here. It's got a little sensor on it. You press there, pull the, the handle out, and if you have the key with you, it'll automatically unlock, it, and then you can open the door. Now, how do you lock the door from the outside? You would think, looking at this, you would think you would press this, right? No, that's how you open the door. To lock it, you press this side in. That locks it. That's how you lock it from the outside with the key in your pocket or whatever, right? 
So you guys got that? All right, so that's how you open and close the door. We'll press on this side to open it. Do like that. Vehicles open. Another kind of cool thing about the Aston, when you open the doors, the doors go up. They're called swan doors. So they go up at sort of, angle. I don't know if you guys can see it. I'll show you from the front. You got a swan door right there, see? Kind of cool, it's kind of exotic. All right, now how do we open the, the trunk? Now here, why am I opening the car on this side? Because on your driver's side, normally in a car, that's where you open the front, tr um, the hood, right? To get to the engine. Well, in this car, it's on the passenger side and it's right there, that red switch. So let me see if I can show you guys. Ah. That's how you open, that's how you open the hood of the car, which is different from most cars because it's a British car. And most British cars are uh, right-hand drive, not left, right? So the British cars are on this side. I don't know if, you, yeah, you call it right-hand, I think. I think. Now, once you got this, the hood popped, to open it, there's a little lever. There's a little lever, where is it? Okay, it's right here. You slide that lever to the left, and then you can pull it up. There's the lever right there. You slide it to the left, pull up, that releases it, a little latch. And then you got access to this beautiful engine. The engine is a V8 twin turbo engine. The M177 engine from Mercedes Benz. There's the two turbos right there and your two intakes. Final inspect inspection by Harrison Bluck. Good looking Harrison. So yeah, it's a, it's a V8, it's twin turbo and <laughs> This thing really wakes up when you tune it. All right, so that's how you open the hood and get access to the engine. You shouldn't you shouldn't have to fool with that, right? You shouldn't have to mess with that too much when you're driving a car, but that's just in case. Now, let's say you had to tow the car. How do you tow the car? There's what's called a tow hook that screws into that little hole right there. There's a little screw hook thing. You put the tow hook in there and you screw it in. It has like a little loop on it. Then a car can, a uh, tow truck can grab into that hook and then tow you, pull you on the back of a flatbed. All right, that's how you would tow the car. All right, we get thorough in these videos, you know what I'm saying? So, all right, that's pretty much it on the outside of the car. Um, this car does have a TPMS, tire pressure monitoring system. So you can check from the inside of the car on your tire pressure before you go for a road trip or whatever. Um, but that's pretty much it on the outside. So let's get into the inside of the car and how to drive this thing. All right, first things first, there's your door, your door, how you open the door right there. All right, your bolster, this is how your door pull to close the door. Pop the trunk from the inside right there. You hold this down for two seconds. Your windows left and right, your mirrors left and right. You adjust which one you wanna adjust, you just click that and then you use this little button to adjust the mirrors, all right? So that's how you do your mirrors. Let's get inside this bad boy. This thing is comfortable. Love being inside this car. All right, so we're gonna start the car up because it's a little hot today, and uh, I wanna turn the AC on. So how do you start the car? These little buttons, I love these buttons, right? These are your little buttons right here. To start the car, you are going to put your foot on the brake. This thing lights up, look. When you take your foot off, nothing. Put the foot on, it shows you red push this button just push it one time uh turn the ac on the way you're going to turn the ac on is pretty simple uh first of all you got heated and cooled seats you just tap one of these all right so my carplay kicked on automatically this car does have carplay which is cool all right so heated and cooled seats let's turn on the cool seats the heat is at the top the cooled is at the bottom, right? You see those right there? It's got it on both seats right there. So you just tap it. So we're gonna tap the cooled seats right there. There it is. So that's, uh, on, it's got three levels and it works pretty good. So my seats are now cooling my boote. Boote getting cooled. Now we're gonna turn the AC on. We hit this auto button right here and that's gonna turn it to set the temperature to whatever you have it set at. It's gonna cool the car to that temperature. All right, so we, we got a, this car is a little different. You see there's no manual gear shift to um, switch the gears. Let me um, turn this down just a little bit so it's not so loud. There we go. All right, and then let me turn off my notifications on my phone right there. All right, so here we go. Let's, let's talk about how to drive this thing. So here's your cockpit. We're gonna start on the cockpit side and then we'll go over to all of these controls here in the center. 
on your passenger side, all you really have is to operate is a window switch over there, and that's pretty much it. Uh, another thing you'll notice is there's no glove box. I still haven't figured out where to put my documents. Um, in some other countries, they have like a little strap and a little document holder that you put on your visor. And this car is a British car, so I don't see a visor. I don't see, oh, they got a mirror right there. That's cool. I don't see any place to put the documents. You do have um, a home link so you can open and close your garage when you're heading out. But all right, let's go ahead and talk about how to, let's, let's take a look at the cockpit. So if you look over here, let's start over on the left. Boom. These are your light controls. Boom. You got auto, you got parking lights. P for uh, parking lights over here. These are your fog lights. These are having the lights all the way on or always on. This is uh, inside of the car, or actually, what is that? Oh, that's just the uh, fog light or your um, LED light. Then inside a the car, you can turn the, the lighting up or down, just a little switch there. And uh, pre self explanatory. There's your parking brake. So if you push that in, it turns on the parking brake. So it says park right there. And if you want to turn it off, you just pull it out. Boom, parking brake is off. All right, so those are your switches over there. That's how you operate that. Now, what are these on the side? This is your paddle shift for um, down or up shift in the car. I'm sorry, down, down shift in the car. So if you're in third and you want to go to second, you click that one time and it'll go to second gear or, you know, or down to first if you click it again. Over here, that's your cruise control right here. That's the cruise control. And no, I'm sorry. This is your um, telescoping steering wheel. This is your telescoping steering wheel right here. This button right there. You can pull it to you, you can push it forward, right? I like it pulling it close to me. This is your blinker switch right here. And there's a little button if you wanna turn on the, the clean your uh, windshield. There's a little button right there. But other than that, it's your blinker and your, um, and your uh, windshield wiper control. Blinker up and down, of course. Your cruise control is down here. That's your cruise control right there. So you, you move it up, that accelerates it. You move it down, that decelerates it. To turn it on and off, you use the little switch on the side. It's kind of hard to see all that, so I apologize for that. Talk to Aston Martin about that. Okay, all right, what are these controls on your steering wheel? This is kind of important. These two buttons here at the top. On the left-hand side, this button controls your suspension. So watch, if I press this button, watch what happened to that. Press the button, it goes into sport plus mode. So it's a little tighter suspension. And let's say you're gonna be in a track, press it again, and then it puts you in the track mode to the tightest level of spin. So the stiffest level of spin. You wanna put it back in normal mode, press this one more time, and it's in normal mode. That's your suspension control. You got three, three setting level of making it um, softer or harder. Uh, suspension depending on driving distance or what you're doing all right on this side we're in sport sport mode right now s is for sport mode C press this button one time you hear the exhaust open up a little bit and now we're in sport plus mode you hit it one more time now we're in track mode track mode right there you see that change right there watch what happens when i press the button i'm gonna do it again watch press this one time normal mode sport plus mode track mode all right so when you go into track mode, that's kind of cool. It shows you the engine temperature as well. That's pretty cool. All right, so let's get into the other controls. So if you hit the home button here, that takes you to your options on the screen. I'm not gonna go into too many details, you know, like how to operate the electronics and stuff. But basically you got a screen over there and these buttons control and this wheel controls what's on the screen. So if you move up and down with the, the, the wheel, it takes you to whatever you want to see in this little screen. We put it on trip and it's your trip settings and you can go up and down with that. It shows you different settings on the car. All right, real simple. You go up and down on that screen with this little wheel. You take, you open up the menu there, you go back, that button. Your phone button, you click this button, you can make a phone call with your paired phone. And then on this side, this is your um, mute the microphone or turn the microphone on. And then the controls, just to get managed, just to focus, controls for the, uh, the, the audio volume. The funny thing is, I never used that before uh, and I just learned something new. You wanna hang up the call, you press this button. You wanna make a call, you press this button or answer a call, you press that one. And to control your audio right there with that wheel. I didn't even know that. <laughs> 
Learn something new. Now, let me see if this is a mute button, right? Now, that's your microphone for your phone to mute your phone or turn it on or off for your phone. But your audio is right there. If you click it in, that'll mute the whole entire system. All right, so that's how you control everything here. And of course, you got a horn right there in the center. Love the steering wheel. This is a very rare option to have carbon fiber on the steering wheel, but I love it. I think it's a must have. And your carbon fiber paddle shifters, they came with the car. That's that stock must have if you ask me. All right, so let's get over here into the nitty gritty of what you're gonna be using to operate the vehicle starting from top to bottom. I'm gonna try to make this quick because I know you guys wanna get to the drive of the car, but starting at the top, you got the screen for your car play and your multimedia system and your car controls and everything there, right? Obviously. Down here, this round, we'll start on the left. You already know what these are for because that is heated and cooled seats for the left and the right. That's your heated and cooled seats. This is the temperature control. So you turn it right for higher temperature, turn it left for lower. This center dial is your, your fan blower. We'll, we'll take the fan down a little bit so you guys can hear me a little better. The fan on the right, that's your center dial for your fan speed. This one is your temperature for the passenger side or you click it and it will go into auto mode to heat or cool the car to your set temperature. Uh, and then here, if you click this one in, that's recirculating your air, turning that on or off uh, in the car. All right, this menu button right here, you press that. When it's not in the CarPlay mode, it'll take you into the main uh, menu screen. Your AC on or off button, your um, rear defroster, your um, front window defroster. This is your unlock button for the doors. This is your lock button for the doors. This is your dome light on the left right there. Turn that on or off. That's real nice. I actually like that. Turn this one on or off with the with the right button. So that's your dome lights for your for you or your passenger. Over here is your heating um, and like your your vent control for the left and your vent for control for the right. I really like that. Like Aston Martin for me with all these buttons. I know there's a lot of buttons here and a lot of people are like old school and all these buttons stuff. Well, I like this better because you don't have to go fishing through the screen to control the settings and the temperature of the car and everything you're using with the car. You just press a quick button. These buttons to me are laid out nicely. I really like this. So I think kudos to Aston Martin. Uh, this, this layout for me is dope. It reminds me of like a Star Wars TIE fighter or something. Okay, anyway, here's your seating controls so you have bolster right here so that's your you know your seat bolsters um for your how it grips you in the seat adding more lumbar that kind of thing that's all right here this one is your seat bottom and this is your seat back like many mercedes uh right there this is your memory seats right there all right and you got the same thing on the passenger side on right there all right so let's get down in here your engine start but start and stop button your reverse button you press that it lights up reverse, your camera comes on. That's how you go into reverse. Um, you wanna go into neutral, you press the in and it lights up. You wanna go into drive, you press D, that lights up. It also shows up on the screen as well, right there. So if I press like, if I press park, it puts it in P and that lights up right there. All right, so those are your controls for your transmission. All right, pretty self-explanatory. All right, these are your hazard lights see right there turn the hazard lights off and then you have um, parking sensors turn those on or off <clears throat> accessing the camera for the car you have a 360 cam on this car that turns it on or off um, I don't know if it'll show it on the screen if I press it but it just turns it on or off radio button to get to your radio media button to get to whatever your media input is on the other side, you got traction control on or off. Now, the way you operate this, this is kind of important, your traction control, you hold it down for five seconds and then it'll light up for the first setting. That's the first setting. So that's like turning the traction control halfway off. It, it's still really on. So if you're sliding a little bit, it will kick in. Um, and then if you hold it down another five seconds, just hold it down, right? It's completely off. Now traction control is completely off and that's when you can have some fun with this car and slide and drift around all right this button right here is your mute the audio turn off active auto start i mean you know auto start and stop you can turn that on or off navigation you got navigation in the screen you can turn that on or off turn your go to your telephone to make a phone call and then you got this big goofy thing here in the center from adopted from mercedes-benz uh aston shares parts with mercedes-benz if you didn't know um i don't like this at all it's it it's supposed to make things easier but it's a touch pad where you draw letters on there and stuff like that and navigate in your screen i don't like it you also got this uh, wheel to control you know what 
what you're accessing on the screen because this is not a touch screen in the 2025 it is so stay tuned for that all right and then you got your volume control for your audio or you can press it down and turn audio off complete all right there we go now we can start driving so got my foot on the brake we're gonna hit d for drive we're in drive mode we are currently in track mode and we are in automatic transmission mode if you want to go into manual transmission mode you use the paddle shifters all right so let's go for a ride Got a little bit loose right there got a little loose right there um, if you put the car in track mode you get a little bit more cracks and pops let's see there we go now we're in track mode a little crack cracks and pop pops pops and bangs so we're in sport plus mode all right, let me show you guys how much torque this car has, watch. You see how it, it lost traction right there? <laughs> I downshifted the second gear, man. This car lost traction, it's crazy. Um, so you gotta be careful. If you turn the traction control off, you gotta be careful how you drive this car because it has enough power to get loose and uh, lose track, especially with Pirellis on here. Uh, the tires on this car are like 295s in the back, so you can imagine 295, not as much traction as like some of your wider tires. I'm going to do a review of this car, but I wanted to actually drop this um, how to drive video first. So we're in third gear, let's see if we can get traction in third gear. Alright, so we're good in third gear. We've got traction in third gear. Second gear and first gear. Uh, if you floor it and traction control is off, uh, good luck. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go down this little winding road. I'm gonna try to turn the cruise control on. I think if you're in manual mode, I don't think it'll turn on. But first, we gotta go a little bit. We gotta go a little bit. Woo! Okay, it got loose in third gear. Yeah, it got loose. It got loose in third, so you gotta be careful. But it's smooth, man. It's real smooth. It's real controllable. The car doesn't do any funny stuff when you let off the gas. Like my my twin turbo Huracan will do a little twitch when you let off the gas. All right, let's go a little bit. Let's get into it. Yeah, this car. This car is super fun, man. It's like the, the mix between an AMG GTR and a Porsche. Okay, when I downshifted just then, it it uh, the car twitched a little bit. All right, let's let's do a little let's do a little test here. First gear, let's do it. You ready? Let's do it. Oh wow! Did it just automatically shift for me? I think the car just automatically shifted for me. All right, so that's. I'm in manual mode, but I think the car automatically shifted for me. Let's try that again. First gear, flooring it, flooring it. Yeah, it automatically shifted. So I don't, you know, I don't know how I feel about that. I guess for me, I'm not too aggressive of a driver, so I think I'm okay with that, knowing that it'll auto shift before you redline and blow the engine. I think I'm okay with that. So just be aware of that. If you're in manual mode, the car will auto shift for you. Now let's see if we can, let's see if we can turn on, um, we're in manual mode. We're, let's see if we can turn on uh, cruise control real quick. All right, so I figured out how to turn cruise control on. You have to be, it, you have to turn the track control back on or it won't set. So now I control it with the little cruise control knob. There's a little cruise control indicator on the miles per hour. I set it to 50 miles an hour and now it's operating properly. So if you wanna work the cruise control, make sure track control is on and then it will work properly, all right? So there you go. That's how you operate cruise control. Now we are, we're on a back road so we don't need no cruise control, man. 
ride this car and tell you guys what it's all about. Yeah, this car is nice. This is my favorite car so far, man. Telling, or at least for the moment. I have a Lamborghini Huracan. This car is so good that I'm thinking about selling my Lamborghini Huracan and buying two Aston Martin Vantages. That's how good this car is. But man, I can't wait to review this car, so you guys stay tuned for that. But yeah, man, that's how you drive the Aston Martin Vantage as we downshift and get ready for this pull. Get ready for this pull. Oh, this guy's in front of me. I'm gonna give him a little space. So I got traction control on, so it's gonna kick in when I hit it right here. It's gonna kick in, watch. Oh, it didn't kick in yet. Oh, I didn't know I was in, oh, that's right, I'm in manual mode. Let's end this video with a little bit of knowledge, man. What did it take for me to be able to get this Aston Martin Bandit? Man, the cliches, the hard work, it's a true, that's that's true. You got a lot of hard work. But you gotta pick something. You gotta pick something that's good at. So you got a Washington calling me. They got they got an Aston Martin they wanna sell me. Y'all think I'm playing about that. Check it out. Hello, hello. Oh, this, is this is Will, yes. Hey, Will. Uh, my name is Mike. Oh, how you doing? Aston Martin Vantage again. Yeah, is it the red one? Hello? It is. Oh, okay. It, it, yeah. yeah. Hey. It's the hyper red. Hey, can can you call me back in like ten minutes? I'm I'm about to get out the car. Yeah. Or I'll, or I'll call you right back at this number. I'll send you a text and you can call me back. Okay, perfect. You guys thought I was playing about getting two uh two Aston Martin. <laughs> I am not joking. That's how good this car is. All right, so how, how do I get to the point where I can get two Aston Martin Vantage? You got to you gotta be prepared to do a lot of hard work and do what it takes to, to be excellent, to be good at something that people are willing to pay for. Um, but you got to pick something. My advice to you is pick something that you're good at and go all in. For me, I learned that I was good with computers, so I went all in on a career in computer science and software engineering, software development. I went all in on it. I became a master of my craft. I learned how to develop software. I created my own software platform early on in the early stages of the internet and that exploded for me. But I chose something, I learned, I, I did so many different things as a kid. Like my parents had me in choir, I hated choir. I learned I was not good at singing, right? I, I'm, I like music. I was good at playing the drums, but I had a cousin who was really, he was a professional drummer. I saw how good he was and I was like, yeah, I'm probably not gonna be a professional drummer. So I chose something that I was good at. Um, I, I was good at computers, man. I went to college, studied software engineering, and I came out, started working, being able to provide for myself. But I knew I had to make more money, so I started dabbling in my own businesses. And being good with computers, man, like I said, I went all in, and it worked out where I found you know, a, a business that I could really go all into and exploit my talent. So what I'm urging you to do is find what you're good at by trying different things. And then once you realize you're good at, figure out what type of businesses need people that are good at that. So you can maybe work in that kind of business and master your craft, master your skill, get better. Then you start your own bit doing what you're really good at and let it blow, man. You gotta dedicate yourself to it. When I started my business, I didn't make money for the first two years. No, wait, longer than that. The first three years, I didn't make any money, right? So you gotta be patient, you gotta be dedicated, man. Let me call this guy back about the red Aston Martin. <laughs> All right, love you guys. Appreciate you guys. Thanks for tuning in. Now you know how to drive an Aston Martin Vantage, and this car is a heck of a car, man. Love it. It's the one and only Floyd Money Mayweather. I'm here to tell you guys to go to Wheel Motivation. The exotic cars is crazy. I've been watching this show for a little while now, and it's growing. But we need everybody else to subscribe to Wheel Motivation and support Wheel. I'm supporting them. You do the same.